This is Terrence Orange at Banks with Information Age Financial Solutions coming to you again with another great article that I came across from Wolf Street. Chapter 11 bankruptcy spiked 63% from a year ago. And with the recent volatility in the stock market, it's just best to keep abreast of the economy because these are the things that affect you, especially in terms of jobs. Jobs is a is a paramount for any kind of civilized society and any economic decisions you're going to do. So with this chapter lever bankruptcy spiking 63%, of course, the title alone caught my attention. So let's dive right in. Highest level since April 2011. It's not just a brick and mortar meltdown anymore. Again, this subtitle also bring uh, my attention as well, because I'm normally when the spike bankruptcies are going, we can understand because of the you know, the retail stores closing with Toys R Us and the others, but it's not just a brick and mortar. And that's what another reason would appeal to me about this article. New Chapter 11 bankruptcy in the United States spiked 63% over a year in March to, to 770 filings, the highest number of filings from any month since April 2011, where there had been 789 filings as companies were still trying to emerge from the Great Recession. It's going back to the Great Recession. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description part of this video, but just wanted to uh, continue on. The chapter, this chart shows Chapter 11 filings back to 11 based on the data from the American Bankruptcy Institute. The last six marches were marked with red dots. The year-over-year -year jump of 299 filings in March is the second largest year-over-year -year jump from any month since the Great Recession. It is behind the, only the jump of 366 filings last December, which had, had a, set a post-recession re record. The yellow dot represents the last six Decembers more on that in a moment. I love charts. Does a great job of showing that here. It has bottomed and then starts spiking right here. As a, a company files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection from creditors in order to try to restructure its debts under the supervision of a judge, the normally involved this normally involves a large reduction in debt and the transfers of part or all of the ownership of the company from pre-bankruptcy owners, shareholders to creditors. Most often, shareholders lose everything. Some unsecured creditors too lose everything. Secured creditors are often made whole, and many creditors, in, in between getting a haircut in return for some ownership, the hope is the company can emerge from bankruptcy with, with less debt and keep operating. Hmm. Bankruptcy filings are seasonal and usually peak in April, along with tax season, so the March jump doesn't augur well for April. The low points in Chapter 11 filings normally occur late in the year before in December, except last December when filings spiked 61% from November to the highest level for any month since April 2013. In March, it got worse when Chapter 11 for spiking, filing spiked to the highest level for any month since April 2011. Now, 2011, you know, it's coming out of that Great Recession, so you can see that why that spike. While the December 2017 spike was truly special in January, February, filings were close to where they had been a year ago, and I thought, and this is person wrote the article and I thought okay maybe December was just a blip but now there's the March spike the second highest, highest spike since the end of the Great Recession the chart below shows the year-over-year -year change in chapter level filings this eliminates the effects of seasonality red bars indicate that filings rose from a year ago blue bars indicate that filings fell from a year ago note the effects of the oil and gas bust in 2015 and 2016 and more recently the effects of the brick and mortar meltdown but now it's just not just a brick and mortar meltdown anymore. Now, see, that's where he's going on making this case. And you can see the charts here. Uh, as I explained in the previous paragraph, again, I'll put this link inside the description. Money, monthly chapter 11s or filings are volatile. To smoothen out the volatility and eliminate the effects of seasonality, we can look at a year over year changes as a three month rolling average. For example, the three month average year over year change from March is based on January, February, and March. And then the images become clear. There's a problem, and it's not a blip. Hmm. Hmm. Again, charts tell the story. The by now well documented brick and mortar retail meltdown is res responsible for part of it. He's mentioned that the retail sector is part of it, but retail bankruptcies of all sizes have been piling up in large numbers since 2016. They all started out as Chapter 11 filings, through many of them later turned into messy liquidations like Toys R Us. Back on January 8th, when I discussed the horrendous spike in Chapter 11 filings in December, I figured that there must have been another cause. The economy is doing okay. Well, I would beg to differ. If the economy is doing okay, then we wouldn't have these kind of issues, would we? Um, in Q4, it was stronger than it had been in prior years, when bankruptcies were much lower. And retail bankruptcies alone would cause that kind of, wouldn't cause that kind of spike. I speculated that the event of the new tax law had a lot to do with it. 
Creditors and shareholders of failing companies knew that they could write off losses in 2017 under the old corporate tax rate of 35%, thus getting the government to pick up 35% of the tax tab of their losses via lower taxes. In 2018, the new tax law adds uncertainties, but shareholders and creditors knew that losses incurred in 2018 would face the new corporate tax rate of 21%, and so the government would only pick up 20% of the losses. But in March, March, I'm sorry, but in March, this logic no longer applies. I'm going to repeat that again. But in March, this, long, this logic no longer applies. So it looks like the December spike was a mix of tax consideration and sharply deteriorating credit environment for companies. When credit dies up, our economy is based on people continuing to take on credit as well as companies, and the credit cycle is coming to an end. This is a sign that the economy has arrived at the end of the credit cycle. Just like I just stated, the Fed is trying to push up interest rates and tighten financial conditions. We companies are starting to have a harder time refinancing their debts, and those exceed face higher borrowing costs. Some sectors are getting hit harder than others, such as brick and mortar retail, which had a terrible march. But this is now spreading in other sectors, such as specialized subprime auto lenders. Again, if you've seen anybody with all these cars going on, this is where it's, it's taking its effect, and they're going to have, you're going to see a lot more of them. You're probably going to see a lot more car deals coming, which even better options than before because the numbers were just going astronomical in terms of the cost of the car because they can keep pushing it. But as the credit continued to die up, we see the, the cracks. Subprime auto loan delinquencies have surged to the highest rate since October 1996. <laughs> Scores of smaller specialized lenders have piled into this field after the financial crisis, some of them backed by private equity firms. So as we once one sector dies when the last housing crash happened and um, with real estate, they move into another. That was with student loans and cars. So now they're having those cracks. Three of them now have collapsed into bankruptcy or were shut down. Allegations of fraud and misrepresentations are swirling through the bankruptcy filings. Read subprime car met and specialized lenders begin to collapse. Uh, again, I'm putting this link in the description. But the signs of bankruptcies increasing and spiking in March, especially through tax season with the new tax cuts, is definitely something to watch. Um, I believe a lot of this thing is being subterfuge and our economy is a lot worse and we really didn't let the full fallout from the, the last recession that we had. And it's been over nine years uh, since we had the last, 2008 was the last economic recession, a little bit 2009, we're in 2018, it's been about nine years. So if this video has been any value to it, please subscribe, leave some comments. Until my next video, I'm out.